Welcome to some more challenge tips and tricks, somewhat of a finale, except for maybe revisiting Crash Landing. But today we're going to go through everything that I did not yet cover, being eight challenge categories, which you can skip to below as always, boot camp, killer, game victories, weapon proficiency, marksman, handling, efficiency, and tactical kits. What they all have in common is that I didn't have anything really cool to share about them, but I'll mention what tips I can here and there, try to address the questions I've seen, and this can be the opportunity to ask any further questions about these challenges if you were looking for some clarification that I don't give. Of course, the downside of having all these in one video is that anybody actually searching for help with any of these challenges might never find it because of how confusing the title is and how terrible the SEO will be, but I didn't want to drag it out when there isn't much to say about these. How about kicking it off with Killer? I know there are many challenges in here that may trip some people up, but I never had a guide for Killer because the difficult part about most of these is not something a guide would help with all that much. Like going on kill streaks. Everyone has their preferred method of going on streaks. People may tell you TDM has the most noobs, or you should camp kill confirmed tags, or use this or that weapon. There's no foolproof way to go on a kill streak, or everyone would be doing it, and everyone's playstyles and preferences are different. You just have to do it. My personal favorite mode for streaks is Safeguard. I feel like of all the objective modes, it's the one where people pay the most attention to actually playing the objective. Things like Dom and Hardpoint with the 100 score per kill often have people just roaming around for their own streaks. In Safeguard, I find people actually escorting the robot, and more importantly, I feel the spawns are very predictable. They are going to move forward with the robot a bit, but they're never going to completely flip around. So I can navigate the map in a way where I'm confident I'm not going to get shot in the back by the whole team spawning behind me. That's my preference, you may find it isn't yours, play whatever you like. The 10 quad feeds I know many people are not enjoying. I admit this is kind of dumb challenge design here, requiring only one quad kill, as if they're recognizing this is somewhat hard to do, then 10 quad feeds where the kill feed can't be interrupted, which often has to be faster than a fury kill. Okay then. Well, there's no foolproof way to get these either, but there are certainly better ways than just running around in TDM. The first option, of course, being hardcore modes with the faster time to kill, making it more possible to quickly chain together the four kills you need. But you would also want something that causes people to group up, which sounds like a hard point or a safeguard. And yeah, for the reasons I just mentioned a moment ago, people in the safeguard actually playing the objective and crowding around that robot, safeguard would honestly be my pick for getting those quad feeds. I find they aren't that rare, especially in the crunch time when the robot is near the goal, as long as you have a good weapon for it, like perhaps a rapid-fire Hades crossbar as a suggestion. I'll be showing some either multi-kills or actual quad feeds that happened within only about an hour of playing safeguard with the Hades. Better yet, you can abuse your special weapon as well, spamming a war machine, sprinting around with a gung-ho purifier, or you could get fancy and use Ruin with the grappling hook to race to the other side of the map off spawn on defense, and grav slam the bot when there are hopefully still a few people People escorting it. It's fairly predictable, you may even give someone a ruined shutdown medal, but it certainly can work out. Or just a well-timed grav slam towards the end can do the trick. I am a fan of safeguard for the multi-kills. Also, I didn't want it to be the first thing I mentioned, but yes, if Nuketown 24-7 ever comes back, especially hardcore Nuketown, that would be by far the best option. Take advantage of it. I only had two quad feeds in my first few prestiges, then got about 15 of them in that Nuketown weekend from playing it so much and never had to think about that challenge again. Just one more miscellaneous tip for quad feeds, the strike team can help you get them. Typically score streaks will not earn you any medals, but strike teams have always been a bit buggy and different. They used to count towards your score streak medals as well, so people used them to get the free for all nuked out dark ops challenge done. They patched that, but they didn't fix it entirely because they do still help you earn quad feeds. So if you're good enough to be earning strike teams consistently, they can help out. For greedy, getting collaterals should happen over time, mostly a luck thing, but just know you don't have to be sniping to get these. For example, I got a fair amount of collaterals in my time using the SG-12 in hardcore. Never run a laser sight shotgun in hardcore since a wider cone is better to more easily land a hit. And if you manage to kill two people with one shell, that does count as a collateral. And finally, resistance. Actually seen a fair number of people struggling with this. I don't remember when I did it, but it was a very long time ago. I do play a lot of objective modes, so it seems reasonable to do this just one time through luck. There are plenty of ways you can approach this. I think guarding a dom flag, maybe even in hardcore dom, would be easiest. 
either B Dom or your home flag if the enemy team is very aggressive. You can wait for people to cap the flag and kill them off of it, and I'm fairly sure you can also stand on the flag you own and kill people from there. So I do like domination for this challenge. I've seen the advice of doing it on Icebreaker because there's a pretty good high traffic area head glitch standing on the B platform. I've also seen recommendations for Hardpoint, but it does have to be five kills protecting one single objective in one life. So Hardpoint is a bit iffy. I suppose you could hold down a point and defend it from five people, but easier said than done. And if five people don't rush you in that one minute, you're out of luck and have to start again on a different point. Control is a great option as well. You can move around in the point much more than standing on a DOM flag. I would be very surprised if you get all of your game victories done without getting this challenge. Just try to stack the odds in your favor with whatever OP class setup you enjoy using. I don't know of it being bugged in any way, so I'm sorry I don't have an incredible works every time strategy. I don't know of any way to cheese it. This really falls under that category I was talking about. I can give some ideas, but the source of the difficulty is not something a guide can really help with. Just gotta get a 5 kill streak defending an objective. Feel free to leave any further killer questions in the comments. Now before moving on to the next category, time for a little bonus, let's stop by Humiliation. When I covered it originally, I skipped over From the Grave. Figured that one would complete itself since it did for me, but I have gotten several questions about it since then. So when it comes to getting Afterlife medals, the main way you can get them over time is with several of the specialist gears and weapons, things like batteries, cluster nades, even the war machine to some extent, Torx barricade and wire, nomads, mesh mines and dog, and even regular frags and molotovs. They're all things that can exist on the map after you die and may get you an Afterlife medal. But if that isn't quick enough for you and you do want to hunt for them as quickly as possible. The best way I can think to do that would be with the Mog, with the Choke and Dragon Breath. It is not all that uncommon to hit someone down really low, they kill you, and then they don't heal in time and end up burning to death, awarding you the Afterlife Medal. So I don't think you'll need to hunt for them if you're going for 100%. Like if you're using the cluster nades to get your 1000 equipment kills, you shouldn't have to worry about this one. But if you do want this calling card faster, the Dragon Breath should help out. Now let's move on, gonna go in a weird order and skip to Marksman because it is somewhat related to Killer. Most of this is about earning camos, which isn't a very complicated concept. I made a video talking about headshots and camo challenges a while back, if you want to hear some more talking about camos. I'm just gonna skip to customized. I've seen some people confused about this one. You do have to equip the gold camo and get a fury kill with that weapon to unlock the top tier of the gold camo with the glowing purple flashes. That's what you're looking for to get the challenge. Now I have seen some clips of people getting a fury kill with a gold gun and not unlocking it. And I believe the cause of that is dying prematurely, according to the examples I've seen. If you get the Fury Kill medal pop-up because you died and that cut short your streak, it doesn't seem to attribute that multi-kill to the weapon, and it doesn't give you the purple effect, and therefore not the challenge either. I think you have to get the Fury Kill from it timing out, and not from dying. So after you get the four rapid kills, stay safe for the few seconds until the medal comes up. A Fury kill should happen eventually, but you do want to get it done quickly if you haven't done Dark Matter yet, because using a gold gun may feel like a waste of time. In terms of strategy, we just talked all about getting Fury kills and quad feeds, and really the advice for this challenge is no different, except you need to have a gold camo equipped. So what I would do is, assuming there is no Nuketown playlist active of course, Go play some hardcore free-for-all or any hardcore mode. You can be working on your pistol headshots or the ABR or whatever you want in hardcore. Then whenever Nuketown comes up in the voting, that is when you pull out your gold gun and go for it. You could also use your gold gun all the time if you already have dark matter or if you don't care about maximum efficiency. This is another challenge I did with the Hades crossbar because I figured that would be OP in hardcore. But your gun can be anything. The strife is top tier as always. I just jumped in this game. It happened right away. I did not need to use the gold camo for more than 30 seconds, then ran into their spawn, and what do you know, another triple kill. With Nuketown combined with the time to kill of Hardcore, it doesn't take much to get a Fury kill. Then the final Marksman challenge is Bling. Not much to say here, once you finally have Dark Matter, this is very easy. Just like the Gemmed Out Dark Ops challenge was made easy, you don't even need a 10 kill streak for this challenge. You just need to activate the second stage, which requires 10 kills, and that's it. You can die all you want. 
The only interesting thing about this challenge is the question of whether you can unlock it by picking up someone else's dark matter weapon and getting 10 kills with it, meaning you wouldn't need to unlock dark matter, and I couldn't find an answer to that. I did my challenge with my own dark matter, somebody suggested the idea in the chat of one of my live streams, but I don't know if they were confident that it works that way, or it was just an idea. If I had to guess, I think it would work with a picked up dark matter weapon, but I have no proof to show of that. I suppose it's worth a try if you really don't want to unlock dark matter for whatever reason, pick up any dark matter weapons you see, but you do have to be at least a third of the way there or so after getting all the gold camos and the couple of diamond camos and the rest of this category. So I'm sorry I don't have an answer to that, it wasn't something I thought to try because I knew I was going to get dark matter regardless of whether or not you could cheese this challenge. Not much of a 100% if you didn't do dark matter. Now we can take a step back to look at weapon proficiency, maybe the most straightforward category in the game. You get some kills, some headshots, some kills with all the weapon types. The only thing here you might not do naturally is the 500 launcher destructions. Just throw engineer and a launcher on your classes and you'll get that done over time. I have that on most classes anyway, so I never had a problem with it. Well, weapon proficiency, real tough. Hope you enjoyed that guide, learned something useful. Game victories, another straightforward category. Of course, I'm still taking my time with the S&D and heist wins. There's no rush, my focus is on ruin shutdowns. You can play core or hardcore, and the wins should all track properly. Something I found really interesting was the pop-up for the Kill Confirmed Wins Challenge after I finished it in a hardcore game. The title and description text actually changed to say Hardcore Kill Confirmed, which made it too long and messed up the formatting. I did not think the challenge text was dynamic like that. Bit of a bug, found that odd. Completely useless information. Now, a week ago, I would have warned you that Clean Sweep and Conquest for winning with a big lead were not tracking in Hardcore. If you ran into issues with these challenges, like I saw many people saying, that was likely the cause, but they did finally fix that, so you can't make my mistake of getting Kill Confirmed wins in Hardcore, then needing to go back for a whole lot more in Core. That said, with Endurance Kill Confirmed, which was just recently in the Endurance Mosh Pit, gone now, but Endurance modes come and go, if that's available, then it can make these challenges much faster. Percentage-wise, it's much easier to win 150 to 125 than it is 60 to 35 in regular Kill Confirmed. Same logic applies to Endurance TDM, so that's something to consider, but not needed if you play those modes for long enough, it'll happen. I'm really not able to go in depth on how to win games, I hope nobody was expecting that. Basically the goal is usually to kill the enemy people, and don't die, and capture the things that the game tells you to capture. I hope that's helpful. I could give you generic classes I like, or tell you to use the acoustic sensor in SND, but that's the kind of very generic challenge advice I don't think is actually helping anybody. Four categories down, we're halfway there. Let's jump to the Prestige tab for these top three. They are all very similar, and I wouldn't say anything here is complicated enough to warrant a guide. A lot about attachments and attachment combinations, but I have seen lots of confusion. I will go through them and tell you what your options are for each one, since attachments vary so much in this game weapon to weapon, that might be convenient to know. Handling has a bunch of attachments. In case there was any confusion, Fast Loader refers to the Hellion Salvo attachment, that's why it mentions destruction. Max Load is the SG-12 attachment that increases pellets in each shell. Steady Grip is different from the grip, even though the image is the same. It is the hipfire grip on things like the Hades, the SG-12, and the Demon. Stabilizer is mainly for snipers, but you could do it with a Skull Splitter Mozu if you prefer. And Fast Shooting is a combo challenge, Quick Draw, Stock, and Grip. Your options that have those three attachments are the KN-57, the SOG 9mm, the ABR-223, and the Outlaw. I would use the KN or the SOG, but the latter two would be pretty good in hardcore. On to efficiency, more attachments, nothing too confusing here. You will have to run HE on the launcher for a while. Position Secure used to have a typo where it said get one objective kill on the same objective in one game, which didn't make any sense. How could you get one kill on different objectives? But it's better now. You have to kill five with High Cal, Suppressor, and Long Barrel. The weapons that have those attachments are the Vapor, the MX-9, and the Swordfish. I went with the Vapor and sat on a BDOM flag, running back there whenever I died, until the challenge finally popped up. It only took one try, not too challenging. It's like doing the Resistance Killer Challenge, except you don't have to get all five in one life. 
For downrange, you need long shot headshots. There are plenty of options for high cow plus long barrel, like the auger is pretty good for the two shot headshots, but really the Mozu was made for this challenge. It has the attachments you need, and because it's a pistol, the long shot distance is a good deal shorter, and you can use Skull Splitter with the combat scope for the easiest long shot headshots of your life. If you don't have the Operator mod unlocked, you could also do it in Hardcore. I am aware both of those options make the Long Barrel and High Cal attachments a complete waste of class points, but for the challenge, it's exactly what you need. Fast Reflexes isn't tough, you just gotta keep swapping. The Time to Kill of Hardcore may help. You could use a Laser Sight ICR and ABR or a couple SMGs, plenty of options. Shredding streaks with FMJ2 is no problem. The Paladin, Titan, and Augur are great for it. And speaking of shredding, plenty of SMGs have the rapid fire laser sight combo available. There's also the Hades and so on. Not a tough challenge. Then in tactical kits, there's a lot about operator mods. Pretty fun to run through these. I waited until after I had Dark Matter and maxed out all the weapon levels just to knock all these out in order. Precision, I used the crossbar. Bring the pain, everything but the fat barrel there I would say is top tier, but the VKM is good too. Up close, you could run the Vapor Bayonet and get the kills over time. I ran around with the Strife though, with the lightweight dexterity all-out melee class setup, and even bound my left click to melee so I could treat it like a melee weapon, because I wanted to knock it out quickly. Accelerated firing, I prefer the wildfire among those. Burst counts, I used double tap, the high cal 2 auger is crazy. And disorientation, you can either be annoying with the Titan, or annoying with the SG-12, the choice is yours. How about upgrades? With these upgrades, you never stood a chance. And very upgraded. Actually seen quite a few questions about very upgraded. Some people have been confused wondering why it isn't counting when they only have two attachments on their gun. Attachment upgrades doesn't mean any attachment. It refers to the level 2 attachments. So grip 2, high cal 2, laser sight 2, all of those things that require you to use the base version to use the upgraded version. Most attachments have an upgraded form, but they aren't available for every weapon, so you need to be using a weapon that can be double upgraded like that. You'll need a minimum of four attachments on your gun to have those two upgrades. That's what the challenge is asking for, and as long as you understand that, this shouldn't be a problem. Upgrades was just for having at least one upgrade. You can do both of them at the same time. Then there are some more specific attachment combinations at the bottom. You should actually do these four challenges before doing all the stuff at the top to be the most efficient. Coming through requires a laser sight 2 and one of those three operator mods, being the ABR, Spitfire, and Maddox. I went with the Spitfire. Steady shooting tells you exactly what to do with the Mozu. Rapid response requires kills shortly after reloading with Fast Mag 2 and Quick Draw. You can do that with either the Maddox or the SOG. Both are good options, just remember every other reload takes practically no time at all, so you can do a double reload to have that quick reload ready for whenever you're about to get in a fight, tap reload and get the kill. And finally, far sighted. I saw more than one person saying this wasn't working for them. I didn't have any trouble with it. Maybe you missed the part about it requiring long shots. You do need to see the long shot metal popping up or you used a different optic. You do need the recon optic. That's the two times scope in case there's any translation issues in other languages. I know that has been a problem sometimes. And then you also need the long barrel and the auger double tap or the swordfish penta burst. As much as I love the auger, I did this in hardcore with the swordfish. Just figured it would be the fastest way to get long shots. There are places you can set up on most maps. I'd say firing range is the best though, followed by icebreaker. Only took a couple games to get that done. And that's it for those three categories. Finally, it seems fitting to end on boot camp. Really, this category needs its own separate video. I have so many tips to give for these challenges. No, I can't imagine anything here needing advice or a strategy. There's no way this category could be your last for 100% unless you actively avoided getting underwater kills, maybe. That would be impressive. It did take me a while just getting it done naturally. You don't spend much time in the water, but that'll get done on Icebreaker, especially with the hard point in the middle and contraband. I remember the 10 prone kills took me a while too. I think I prestiged a couple times before getting that done because I almost never lie down in this game. Well, if you were looking for some clarification for something here, ask away, otherwise I don't know what to say about them. With that, we have covered every multiplayer challenge in the game, as long as you consider skipping over easy challenges to be covering them. 
I don't intend to hunt for Dark Ops challenges. They tend to be focused on either a ton of luck or a ton of skill, sometimes both. Not what I would consider very guidable for the most part. If they can be guided, then those guides already exist out there. No need for me to remake the same thing. I did go for Gemmed Out. I talked about hunting for that back in the recap video now that it was made easy. You can use my camo spreadsheet to track your progress on that if you want. And the endurance modes, when they're around, make it very straightforward. But that's it then. We're done! Well, of course, it isn't entirely over yet. I'll be casually getting those remaining wins, while Crash Landing will continue to sit there taunting me. I expect I will be revisiting it, as I've said. You can be on the lookout for that. Even though this isn't really the end, I'll still say thank you for joining me on this challenge hunting journey. Hopefully you picked up a couple useful tips and tricks along the way to help with your own challenge hunt, or just enjoyed spectating it. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.